Let's go! Ahain! August. There you are. Good evening, folks. Welcome to the live. Welcome to the live. <laughs> We're going to have to start again. I'll just uh, do the whole video run up again. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Live Irish Myths. Welcome to Mythical Ireland Library. I'm Anthony Murphy, your host for the next hour or so. Tonight, we are back on the subject of place names in Ireland, which we've covered quite a lot over the past uh, couple of years, but we never get tired of it. And of course, it's highly possible that uh, the odd uh, dad joke will break out as well. Philip Blair was the first of the commenters tonight while the countdown was going on. Philip has given us the joint hands. Some of the people say that's supposed to be a prayer, but other people say, no, it's, it's two people giving each other a high five. I don't know. Take your pick. Philip, you're welcome. Helen is watching from the Black Hills of South Dakota. I hope it's not cold down there, Helen. We're starting to get a bit wintry and a lot of rain today. A lot. Elaine says, I'm a sneaky fella. Actually, we've been doing the countdown for the past couple of episodes, Elaine. But uh, seeing that you were late for the last episodes, you wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> I'm having a laugh. You're very welcome, Elaine. Good to see you. Uh, Patricia Pack is uh, sending uh, light and love to everyone around the world. A very uh, generous, Patricia. And right back at you. Thank you very much for joining us. Brendan Byrne snuck in early. Good stuff. No need to take his name in a black book. Tom King is in the house. <laughs> he said, uh, have you the popcorn? I forgot mine. I suggested that he cook the popcorn on his fire, uh, to which he said... Done it once, Anthony. What a mess. <laughs> I can imagine. Yes, indeed. Daisy Peters is in the house, joining us from Rio in Brazil. Daisy, our uh, Southern Hemisphere uh, South American representative most of the time. Daisy, great to see you in the house. Patricia Pack says, may virtual sunshine or actual sunshine warm your heart and soul. You are loved. Yes, indeed. Wayne Bird says, evening, Anthony and the good folk. Hope all's well. When you say the good folk, you talking about the community or are you talking about the other ones? Let's not mention the F word. Um, Gronje Ivriam says, evening time, evening all, time for the best part of my Monday shift here in Motorsport Valley. Wow. Where is Motorsport Valley? Gronje, you're very welcome to the live stream. Good evening. Adrian O'Beglin is in the house. Hello, Adrian. Slaunche. Karen Fay O'Loughlin is sitting in a tire shop waiting. 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 Hope it doesn't take too much longer, Karen. Christina O'Shaughnessy is joining us from Geneva. Hello, Christina. A very good evening to you and hello to all our friends in Switzerland. Mandy McCurl says hello, everyone, from a cold but dry Isle of Mull. Finally, the stars have come out this evening after what was a very cloudy day and for the first half of the day, extreme rain. I mean, literally, you know, one of those cases where Mother Nature looked down at Ireland at the end of the summer as it Oh, you haven't had any rain in ages. Don't worry, I'll make it up to you. <laughs> John Main is saying greetings to all the Tua from a cold and sunny San Francisco. I refuse to believe that it's cold in California, but John tells me uh, that uh, quite often the fog rolls in there and uh, it can be quite, there can be quite a nip in the air. Alan Hoskins is in Ballina, Killaloo and hopes everyone is well. Fine uh, business, Alan. Hope you are well too. Thank you. For joining us, Marianne Kinja is in the house. Hello, Marianne. I'm not sure if we have seen you recently. If we have, I apologize. If we haven't, hello. And even if we have, hello. Welcome. Uh, did it, did it, Seamus Marr is in the house. Well, clan, hope yous are good. Well, in fine fettle, Seamus, thank you for asking. Hope you're well too. Josie Weatherford is so happy to be here for the live stream today in South Dublin. Josie, a great pleasure to see you again. And uh, Josie uh, was... Uh, the one who uh, presented me with John Creedon's book recently. So thank you very much for that. Gillian Stapleton is in a filthy, rainy Yorkshire. Well, Gillian, we share that, except for I think you're getting the rain maybe that we had earlier. It's very damp out, but it stopped raining, thankfully. Touch wood. Anne Scott Doherty is in a very chilly southern Oregon. Uh, uh, Anne, please tell us what uh, temperature you describe as very chilly. By the way, I saw... Uh, New York State. Can't remember that. Buffalo, was it? Uh, six feet of snow. Uh, 
something like that absolutely crazy elaine says oh no anthony you found me out low <laughs> uh, you have to be up early catch me out know yourself bother less says hello well hello know yourself bother less uh you're very welcome Anne McCallum is in the house. Hello, Anton and the Mighty Two. I hope everyone's good from lots of snow. Minus seven Celsius with bitterly cold, fierce winds this past weekend. But today's balmy four Celsius. The winds have calmed a bit and the sun is shining. Wow, we had six Celsius today and it warmed up to towards the evening uh, to a nine. So there you go. Lisa, Lisa Kelly, uh, is it Salsinger? Uh, says, yay, free. <laughs> Hello there, Lisa. You're very welcome. Uh, Michelle Woodburn is in uh, Jarrowiji, current and traditional home of the Wiyot people, now known as Eureka, California, USA. A very good afternoon to you, Michelle. I will immediately silence the phone so that we do not, well, so that I don't, but primarily, but you don't also get uh, constantly disturbed by uh, pinging. Uh, Michelle, you're very welcome, and thank you for joining us Um uh, now I'm seeing repeated comments again. This happens every week. Anyway, not to worry. We'll find the new ones. And we'll... Motorsport Valley says, Gráinne is mostly the Midlands of England. Sure, I wish I was back home in Derry. Gráinne, uh, I'm not sure if you're into motorsport, um, if you race the cars yourself, but uh, very good. And uh, yeah, Derry, fine part of the world. Joe Butler is in Colorado. Thank you. Auntie Joe has shared the live stream on the Mythical Ireland community and Mythical Ireland creatives, don't forget, if you're watching on Facebook, on the Facebook page, there is also a community group where you can post and uh, participate uh, much greater in conversations. And also, if you're uh, an artist or a poet or a singer or a songwriter or a sculptor or whatever, uh, there's a Mythical Ireland creatives group. For people who are inspired by Mythological Ireland or Mythical Ireland, thank you, Joe. Uh, Peter Kennedy says, a very good evening from down the road in Balia Brigine. Uh, Trenonoa, Peter. Uh, uh, welcome. Falcher uh, Esther Windsor says, uh, greetings, Anthony. Love from the wild, wet, windy London, England. Good evening, uh, Esther. You're very welcome to the live stream. Great to see you here. Carmel Moore it says, we are getting your rain in Cork. Sorry about that. Had to push it off somewhere else, you know. Cork seemed as good a place as any. I'm only joking. I was in Cork recently and loved it. I really love Cork. Uh, big, uh, it has a big place in my heart. Joe Butler says I received my mythical Ireland calendar a few moments ago. Coincidences make coincidences make me happy. Brilliant stuff. Thank you, Joe. Delighted to hear that it has arrived. Hopefully in good shape. Uh, Lisa says, first time seeing you in many months. No work today. Greetings from New Jersey. Five Celsius here. A very good evening. Uh, I just shared on my Facebook today, this time three years ago, well, this day, three years ago, I was in the Big Apple. I was in Manhattan. Uh, but this time, th uh, this week, three years ago, I was staying in Princeton. In the, is it the Nassau Inn, I think was the name of it. And uh, I gave a talk. Uh, in the university there on the 22nd, which is tomorrow, three years ago. And uh, loved Princeton, have to say. Really loved it. wonder what part of New Jersey you're in. Uh, the full Irish Gary's in the house. Geogwich. Good evening, all. A shocking day on the sod. Ask Dogda to bring back the sun. <laughs> That'll work. Anya Ryan is in the house. Uh, Geogwich, Anya, welcome. Come in there and sit down and make yourself comfortable. John Main says, it's seven celsius there is a lovely frost these mornings that sounds very irish john desire riley is in the house me and amadeus are happy to be tuning in we will have to skip out a little early today i have to give a horseback riding lesson at 2 30 that's perfectly okay desire and you're always very welcome and say hello to amadeus for us yesterday morning says Anne was minus five celsius this morning was not much better cold michelle terrell is in uh s is it Estes Park in Colorado? Sunny and not so cold. Finally, brilliant stuff. Michelle, a very good afternoon to you. Natasha, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Is it ro ro roast? Roast? Uh, roast is in the Netherlands. Natasha, you're very uh, welcome to our live stream. Riley Burton is here. Hello, Giacic. Welcome, Slaunche, Falche. And uh, pour yourself a drink and, you know, put a blanket around yourself if it's cold. Get a warm cup of tea or something stronger, if that is your wish. 
and join us for story time. Val Valerie Gallagher is in chilly but sunny Rhode Island. Ah, the sun always shines in Providence, even at night. That's what I heard anyway. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Erica Humberducey is saying hello from a cold and rainy Ipswich, UK. Uh, a very good evening, Erica. I hope you're comfortable and warm. Gemma McGowan is in the house. Gra August Banacht. Uh, Anthony, which means the gods be with you, uh, the deities, should I say, not favoring uh, either gender. Uh, Gemma, what an extraordinary greeting. Slauncha, sure, look, you know, I could nearly hang my head out the window and give you the live stream without being on the internet. You're that close. A good evening to you, anyway. Anna Liffey says, cozy in front of turf fire up here in County Derry. Sounds lovely. Turf fire. <laughs> They're trying to ban that. Anyway, we're not going to do the politics. No, I shouldn't have said it. But anyway, they're trying to ban that here. And a lot of people are very unhappy about that. I mean, turf cut, cutting. Not not burning turf. You can import turf, but you just can't cut it. Anyway, anyway. So uh, last week, we were reading from the fabulous. Oh, haha, what am I saying? Hang on a second. Announcements. Well, announcement singular, one in particular. Here goes. So uh, recently, and uh, we're covering old territory here. I'll make this as quick as possible. So please do not tune out. Do not fall asleep. Do not take a toilet break. Uh, on Halloween, the last day of October, it was a bank holiday Monday in Ireland. Myself and my wife and two of our kids were going to County Cork for a little break, a little bit of a holiday. First time we'd been away in three years since before the pandemic. On the way down the road, we broke down. Car ran into trouble. It was a bank holiday. It was peeing down with rain uh and uh it, it was uh uh shall we say a challenging experience because it took i think we were waiting in total in the car park for about four and a half hours uh for the aa to arrive and check the car and make a decision and the decision was the car needs to be towed and uh, we won't be able to get you back on the road tonight i booked a hotel because the rent rent a car crowd said we can't deliver a car to you you have to come and get it and it was in waterford and we were stuck in cashel in county tipperary and i mean the whole thing turned into a bit of an ordeal um and uh yeah uh, it was stressful however we did try to make the most of it. We did finally get to our destination in Cork 25 hours after leaving Drogheda. A journey that should have taken about three and a half to four hours took 25 hours. I kid you not. Anyway, some members of the community, having seen my Facebook posts about the predicament we were in, uh, one in particular, actually, uh, one ringleader uh, said to me, or, uh, you know, said online uh, that, uh, you know, let's try and... Uh, raise a few quid to get Anthony home because, you know, uh, his car is going to need to get fixed and he's had to fork out loads of money for this, that and the other. And that was a brilliant gesture and a very, very gratefully received gesture. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, a, a, a really warm gesture. Anyway, um, the target was put at 500 euros. It quickly passed 500 euros and the target was raised to 800 and it passed 800 and it eventually hit 1,000 euros, ladies and gentlemen, 1,000 euros. Anyway, uh, this is not a knife, by the way. This is my le my uh, letter opener. That's a clue. Uh, anyway, said gentleman um, w w and and myself were overwhelmed with the wonderful gesture and the kind support of the community. Amanda Morgan is in Queensland, Australia. A very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. And um, I thought about it long and hard, and I said, "There's no way I can take that money." I need. I mean, I know it was that's uh, the community you know were very generous and uh, very decent very helpful extraordinary thing for people to do i mean uh, uh, people who contributed you know anything from a fiver to 75 euros um some of them are people that i know some of them are people that i know online and some of them are people i've never met and uh, i just thought it was an extraordinary gesture anyway i raised the prospect with tom first and then on I'm not sure it was last week's live stream or the previous week's. I think it was two weeks ago. I raised the prospect of donating that money to charity um, because I just didn't feel like I, I look, I, the way I thought about it was simple. It was, I'm, I've got a first world problem here, which is I'm on a bit of a holiday and my car has a bit of trouble and there are far more needy people in the world than I. 
and I took a decision that I wasn't going to take the money and that I was going to donate it to charity with Tom's agreement and with, I think, the agreement of the TUA uh, because I did raise it on a live stream and there was widespread support for it. And I got some messages afterwards and some emails from people saying absolutely 100% support that idea. So the news is that tomorrow morning, uh, myself and Tom will present two checks to local charities here in the Boyne Valley. Uh, the first check uh, will be presented to in the morning to the chairperson of a charity that has long been not just in uh, in my own uh, heart, but in the hearts of many people locally here, and that is Drogheda Homeless Aid. Drogheda Homeless Aid uh, has been uh, for decades a voluntary charity. Uh, they established a uh, a hostel uh, where uh, the homeless can stay, and they also have a program of resettlement where people in challenging situations who have been homeless for various reasons. And by the way, those reasons can be anything from losing a job and not having money and, and, and get kicked out of a house to drug abuse and alcohol abuse to marital breakdown to, you know, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I felt, look, there's an ideal charity. So uh, in the morning, myself and Tom will present 500 euros of your wonderful uh, gesture to Drogheda Homeless Aid. Then a short time later, we will present the other 500 to a group called the Drogheda Dolls, D-O-L-L-S. Now the Drogheda Dolls, uh, as you might imagine, it's, it's got, it's, it doesn't really have anything to do with little cuddly dolls like or Barbies. It's more got to do with, this is a group of ladies who during the pandemic decided to start, uh, you know, some charity work and doing uh, some things for the less well off. And uh, they've been phenomenal uh, in their fundraising efforts over the last couple of years. Um, so we're going to contribute towards uh, their uh, campaign uh, to raise 70,000 euros, which will be split between four charities. One is palliative care in Louth. Look, I don't need to tell you palliative care um, is uh, just, I, I believe that the people who work in palliative care are living saints, actually. They are the most incredible people. And, you know, uh, I, I know that I'm not quite sure if it has exactly the same meaning in the States and Canada, but I know that Irish and the European viewers will know what I'm talking about, but palliative care is basically final end of life care. You know, they're extraordinary people. The second charity is So Sad Drahada, which is uh, So Sad stands for Save Our Sons and Daughters. It is a suicide awareness charity uh, set up by a, a man from Drahada whose own son had taken his life. Um, and another very, very um, worthy. Uh, charity, I think you'll agree. The third charity that Drogheda Dolls are raising money for is the Drogheda Animal Rescue. Now, Drogheda Animal Rescue have been around again for decades. Uh, look, the main thing that they do, as far as I'm aware, thankfully, I haven't had to use their services. Actually, we did. We got our first dog from the rescue. Um, you know, they take rescues. They rescue animals that are hurt and sick and uh, abandoned. Um, and try to rehome them. Now, they, I believe, are being kicked out of their current premises and are looking for a new premises. They need support at the moment. The final charity that the Drogheda Dolls are raising money for is uh, St. Nicholas's GFC. That's a Gaelic football club here in Drogheda. They're hoping to build an entire new facility for their ladies' teams, uh, which I think is fantastic. So I hope that that is a suitable uh, gesture on your behalf uh, the checks that we are presenting will not have my name on them and they won't have Tom's name on them. They will uh, they will say, you know, two draw to home and say two draw to dolls, 500 euros from the mythical Ireland community. Now, another one um, that I thought about is that I hope that this can become an annual um, uh, drive, an, a, an annual gesture that uh maybe you know in october november time uh, each year um you know we can nominate some charities um here in ireland and you know we'll organize a gofundme purely just for the charities 
on behalf of the community. I, I actually think it has the potential to become something really huge because, first of all, the community is substantial. Uh, and, and please forgive me if this, this, uh, this isn't a boast. This is just the figures. The combined following of Mythical Ireland on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and Twitter is 110,000 people. Um, there were about 35 to 40 contributions to that, which was brilliant. But that was for me, you know, that was and I, I'm telling you, I don't need it. I'm blessed in life. I have everything I need. Um, I, I, I think that next year we should be setting a target of several thousand, you know, uh, and just see what comes. And if if people can only contribute two or three euro, you know. Anya says, still time to donate. Yeah, in fact, I mean, the link, uh, Tom, uh, actually, do you know what? Uh, do you know, I, uh, I can't find the link. Um, and it's probably, a, if somebody can share the link, uh, I'll, sh I'll reshare it uh, for both YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and if people want to contribute, uh, we will contribute the further funds to those charities. They're getting 500 euros each tomorrow. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I uh, have to say I was extremely moved by the gesture. Um, and I hope that nobody is upset by my decision not to personally gain from it. I just didn't feel right about it. And I feel that it, this is a brilliant, brilliant way uh, to as I say, help other people who are facing real challenges uh, this winter. Uh, people without homes, people who are dying, uh, you know, uh, uh, people who have been affected by suicide, et cetera, et cetera. Need I say more, you know? Anyway, I am apo apologies. That took a little bit longer than expected. Thank you, Gemma. Oh, Kelly, brilliant. Good stuff. Um, I, I've known Kelly for years. Um, it's called hospice in the states. Yeah, we 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 have um, we have groups with that word in them. Hospice, such a beautiful organization, is currently taking care of my nanny who's on her last days in Louisiana. And Amadeus is thrilled the puppies will be getting help too. Brilliant stuff, Desiree. And uh, yeah, very sorry about your 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 nanny. Um, it's not easy, and. Uh, well, there you go. Valerie says it all. Um, I didn't expect that there would be any objection to it. I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of what was happening, that I'm not taking a cent of that money for myself. Um, there are people, as I say, who are in far greater need. Samantha Healy is in Reykjavik. Wow. I wonder, have you seen any of the Aurora Borealis, otherwise known as the Northern Lights. Adrian says, I think we'd be happy to contribute more than once a year. Well, I think once a year would be a good start, you know. Um, Anna Liffey wants to contribute. So if somebody can send me the link, I will share it for everyone on here. Um, let me just, uh, apologies. I, I know we're late getting started. Well, actually, we're not that late. It usually takes us about 20 minutes anyway. I just want to see if I can find... Um, uh, get what was it called? Get Anthony home or something, wasn't it? And look again, uh, Tom and I have discussed this at length in the background. Tom is perfectly happy uh, with what we're doing tomorrow, and I insisted, of course, uh, that he be involved. Um, he's going to be in the presentation photographs. So here we go. Here is the link. If you want to donate uh, to those charities, um, we will make sure that money gets to them. Um, so I've just shared the, the link, the GoFundMe link on Facebook and on YouTube. Currently, it stands at 1,000 euros. As I say, 500 of that is going to draw out a homeless aid tomorrow and 500 is going to draw out a dolls tomorrow. If we get more, I'll split it between them again. Absolutely no problem. And I think it's a very generous gesture. Actually, thank you, Anya Ryan, uh, I think was the first one to suggest that we reshare the link. Um, because, you know, just because the goal is 800 euros doesn't, and it's reached a thousand, we can keep going, you know. Uh, anyway, th thank you from the bottom of my heart, absolutely every one of you. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, why the hell didn't we do this before? Why didn't we do this earlier in the pandemic, you know? But 
anyway, we're doing it now. That's the important thing. And thank you to everyone who has uh, donated, you know. Uh, Bev says, do you take dollars? Yeah, I think GoFundMe, that website converts. So if you pledge in dollars, I think, sorry, you pledge in euros, it'll convert your dollars, basically. It'll tell you what you'll pay in dollars, I think. But anyway, hopefully you'll be able to, and it shouldn't be a problem, you know. Um, and you know what? If everyone, do you know what I was thinking? If every one of the Mythical Ireland followers online uh, donated a dollar or a euro, let's call it a euro, we could raise 100,000 for charity. Think about it. It's amazing, you know. And uh, Tom says, such an honor. Well, it'll be my honor to stand beside you, Tom, and present those checks, I have to say. Um, so watch out. We'll be taking some pictures tomorrow and we'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll post an update uh, tomorrow, you know. Um, Anyway, seems to be a great reaction to that. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, look, thank you first and foremost for your generosity. Thank you for caring. <laughs> and thank you, Tom, for the lovely gesture. Um, you know, it, it really is appreciated. And and I hope that uh, you, you, uh, you all, and I'm sure you do, and I'm sure it doesn't need to be explained, but uh, I'm sure you all support uh, the initiative too. Uh, to give it to people who actually are in great need, you know, people and animals, animals as well. Indira Stefaniana is uh, saying hi to Annie in Reykjavik because she's of Icelandic heritage, which is plenty Irish. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so we're going to pick up where we left off last week. I was reading, uh, finally, we're getting around to it. And I, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just like people who watch afterwards on YouTube can get very impatient. When is this going to start? You know, Tara Weston is in the house. Good evening, Tara. You're very welcome. Actually, do you know what I'm going to do? Oh, yes. I'm going to share that link on the ticker. You know the ticker? Uh, give me one moment, folks. It's a little bit of a long link, you know. There you go. There's the GoFundMe. And it's not going to into my pocket. If you donate to that GoFundMe address there, the money will go to those charities. Draw the homeless aid and draw the dolls for their Christmas campaign. Okay, let's pick up where we left off. As I say, we were reading from the wonderful The Heritage of Ireland, a massive tome. I think it was 700 pages or thereabouts. Natural, man-made and cultural heritage, conservation and interpretation business and administration and that's edited by neil buttermer colin rin and helen Gearan. a fabulous production uh, quite academic but uh, very very detailed and covering everything from as i say place names to irish music to you know prehistoric archaeology to uh, you know, arch ar ar architecture you know urban urban architecture tourism it's just incredible it's an incredible piece of work and uh, I only found out about it during the pandemic. I, I bought it in, uh, yeah, last year. And I hadn't heard about it before. There you go. Uh, where's my chat gone? Sorry, I need to keep the chat. There you go, Marsha Downs. Absolutely 100% right. And thank you also uh, for your kind gesture in the whole thing. Uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, came in late. So uh, I'll probably regularly post the link uh, as a comment as well as the fact that, that it is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Uh, what am I doing here? Sorry. There we go. Anyway, I'll pick up with the crosshead that says Patrick Weston Joyce and Edmund Hogan. We all know who P.W. Joyce is, don't we? Uh, P.W. Joyce's famous works, which are on the shelves behind me, are his uh, Irish place names of Ireland in three volumes and his... Uh, Romantic Tales, is, is it? I can't remember exactly the title of it, but it's uh, ro Ancient Celtic Romances by P.W. Joyce. Next, I must get the reading glasses on. Unfortunately, the old lamps are not as good as they used to be. Michael Pike is in the house. Hello, Michael. You're very welcome. Tara Weston says the homelessness in Ireland is now going to be remembered as a time of great shame and lack of care by Irish society. Yes, but let's not uh, tar everybody with the same brush. There are a lot of very good people out there doing very good work, but I suppose the point is they shouldn't have to. It should be housing for everybody. Um, 
Barbara Murphy says, guess why I was late? I'm rooting for a great, great game. Apparently there's something on in down there in the Gulf somewhere. There's some big event on involving kicking a ball of air around a field, being watched by lots of people cheering and having to kick this air ball of air between two two sticks and I think it's called football. The World Cup, apparently. Next, we must touch upon two of the most popular place name publications ever in Ireland. Yeah, I need to move the keyboard to get this tome onto the desk. Firstly, Joyce's The Origin and History of Irish Names of Places. <laughs> That's its official title. Many of those who edited Irish texts or collections of annals in the late 19th century depended almost entirely on O'Donovan for place name identification. And O'Donovan, as we were saying last week, was the uh, the chief uh, place name lore collector for the Ordnance Survey in the early, well, in the 1830s, the earlier first half of the 19th century. But Joyce, a self-taught scholar like O'Donovan himself, set a new course. Patrick Weston Joyce, 1827 to 1914, grew up in a hamlet called Glan O'Sheen or Glen O'Sheen, as it's anglicised, not far from Ardpatrick or Ardporig, to give it its Irish name in County Limerick, surrounded by mountains and glens bearing such names as Sheafin, sorry, Seafin, uh, which is the, the seat of Finn, not to be uh, confused with the she, as in the other world dwelling. Oh, of course, uh, Josie Weatherford is reminding me, of course, uh, of Joyce's History of Ancient Ireland. Thank you, Josie. Uh, brilliant. Um, that's okay, Anna Liffey. Perfectly okay. We don't mind whose name is on the donation. The people who will benefit from that uh, will be uh, just uh, thrilled. And in fact, uh, when I made the phone calls in recent days uh, to the chairperson of Drogheda Homeless Aid, uh, and to actually not sure what her title is in Drogheda Dolls, but uh, the leading lady or one of the lead, leading ladies in Drogheda Dolls, they were absolutely thrilled and uh, particularly uh, thrilled to hear about that wonderful gesture of support. Um, okay. Uh, C. Finn. Barnagoyha, which I believe means the windy gap. Glan on Oir, Lor na Freachon, <laughs> and uh, Lor na Grainia. L A D H A R, somebody help me with that. Uh, Freachon is um, uh, Bilberries, isn't it? The last being the name he later gave to his re residence in Rath Mines, Lor. Lor, Lor Nagrania, or uh, in an anglicized Lyre Nagrania, L Y R E. Little wonder that from his youth he was imbued with an intense consciousness of those mellifluous names, which were as much a part of his landscape as the very hills and valleys they designated. An indefatigable worker in more than two dozen publications, he illuminated many neglected areas of Irish culture, history, political and social, language, folk music, and various aspects of education. But the work for which he is most renowned is his three volume study mentioned above. And that is of course the place names. Joyce was the first to realize the potential of the index of townlands, parishes, and baronies, which the labors of the Ordnance Survey had made available, and that census 1861. Here was presented an alphabetical list of all the townland names in Ireland, a cornucopia overflowing with samples of place name elements from every part of the country. When treating of the word chower, T-E-A-M-H-A-I-R, which we all know is the Irish word for Tara, as in the Hill of Tara, uh, meaning elevated spot or height, for instance, he was not confined to Tara in County Meath, since the index lists townlands also named Tara in counties Down, Offaly, and 
Wexford. Interesting stuff. I'm not seeing the chat. I think we had this problem last week. Uh, the last, uh, maybe people are quiet and totally engrossed in listening, or maybe they're busy getting their credit cards out for the f fundraising campaign. Okay. So since we shared the link, uh, we the total has gone up by 90 euros. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much to those who have donated in the past few minutes. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Simply by resharing that. And thank you, Anya Ryan and uh, Anna Liffey, uh, I think were the two in particular who suggested that we reshare it. Um, wow. In, in, in five minutes, we've raised another 90 quid. Brilliant. Thank you. And uh, on behalf of the charities, I'm sure. Thank you. Furthermore, Joyce found there, sorry, found there townlands named Tor, T A U R, Tower, T O W E R, and Torum, T A W R A N, all of which he utilized to illustrate the semantics of the word. In this way, he built up a whole series of different categories to elucidate the system by which place names were formed and the manner in which usage and pronunciation varied from one region to another. In concluding the preface to his final volume, written the year before he died, Joyce wrote, And now, having finished my task, I claim that the account given in this three-volume work of the place names of Ireland, their classification, analysis and etymologies, is fuller in the first place and in the second place rests on surer foundations than the history of the place names of any other country. A boast in a way, uh, but uh, probably an accurate one, in fairness. And I think the work of O'Donovan uh, in that regard was also remarkable. Uh, pretty, pretty special. Barbara says, some of us can't donate until after we log off our phones. Actually, that's perfectly no problem whatsoever. And yeah, please do. Uh, and remember to do it. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, brilliant. This was no idle boast. Joyce's admirably comprehensive survey of modern day townland names has never been surpassed in its field, though it is best used in conjunction with Flanagan, 1981 to 2, and that is uh, a publication called because there is a bibliography in each of the chapters in this wonderful book. That is D. Flanagan, 1981 to 82. So it's very unusual for a, a public, a, a book uh, to have, you know, two years on it instead of just one. Anyway, uh, some guidelines to the use of Joyce's Irish names of places. Oh, sorry. Yes, it's in the Bulletin of the Ulster Place Name Society, second series, uh, pages 61 to 69. Yeah, so that was obviously a journal article. Uh, but... Uh, the, uh, there are obviously some things that one needs to be aware of when one is approaching Joyce's place names. It is an older work, in fairness. In a different category, uh, I mean, we're talking, you know, uh, post-famine, but not that long after the famine, you know. In a different category, namely the collation and identification of original forms of place names as found in Irish manuscripts, John O'Donovan's monumental edition of the Annals of the Four Masters, mentioned above, provided the main inspiration for the single most important publication on the subject, Edmund Hogan's unpronounceable Onomasticon Gaelicum, 1910. So I told you this before because we spoke about it. I'm going to show it off again. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my copy of Hogan's Onomasticon Gaelicum, published in 1910. And I think I mentioned this before, um, but I'm going to mention it again. This copy was previously in the ownership of Thomas Kinsella, the late Thomas Kinsella, translator of Toynbo Cooling, uh, which I think he's uh, very, very well known for. So there you go. Uh, a very cherished and, uh, I have to say, almost pristine copy of uh, Hogan's Onomasticon Gaelicum. Now, there is an electronic version of the Onomasticon Gaelicum online, uh, and 
uh, it's got more entries than the published version. Uh, you know, it being an electronic version, it can be updated. So if you're looking for that resource, it's available for free on the internet. An absolutely amazing resource. You would not believe the hours. I mean, I'm not talking about hours, the days and days and weeks and weeks and months and months, years of scholarship that have gone into those uh, works. But uh, thank you to all the scholars who dedicate themselves to that. We are up to 1,105 euros, folks. So we've had 105 euros donated since we mentioned it uh, about 10 minutes ago. Uh, thank you. Uh, amazing stuff. Father Hogan, Todd Professor at the Royal Irish Academy, spent 10 years of his life compiling this work. There you go. 10 years, imagine. 10 years. Wow. Completing it in his 80th year. Wow. Again, amazing. He, along with his helpers, whom he lists in the introduction, assembled nearly 700 pages in double columns and closely set type of place names excerpted from Irish manuscript, sorry, manuscript sources, many of which were unpublished at the time, and added numerous place name identifications to supplement those of O'Donovan and others. Remarkable work. Cy B is in the house. I'm not sure if I said hello to you. Good evening there, uh, Simon. You're very welcome. I think Simon's in Limerick. Tarini Pendleton is definitely not in Limerick. Tarini is in, pardon me, Laguna Beach in California. A very good afternoon to you. Tara Weston says there are seven ring forts surrounding Bally James Duff. The Ramon and ring fort is my favorite. Wow, seven. Nice. Are they all obviously all still upstanding? Not plowed out of it. Anyway, we won't go there. A significant aspect of Hogan's work is its importance as a research tool for early and medieval Irish history. So I want to tell you that when I was researching, for instance, my monograph about Bowen, uh, the onomasticon would have been a significant source. By following its references to the source, it often serves to link together information for the researcher that otherwise would remain unconnected. Very important. In my case, I certainly have seen that and benefited from that. We literally, folks, um, for all the things that have been said about Mythical Ireland and the work that I've done over the past couple of decades, I'm just standing on the shoulders of giants in many respects. People who have gone before, scholars who have dedicated entire years, years and years and years of their lives uh, to these things. It's just extraordinary. This has kept it central to medieval Irish studies, as, it re as its references to sources have remained indispensable, whereas identifications of certain place and tribal names have been superseded by later scholarship. <clears throat> it is clear from Hyde, I'm guessing that's Douglas Hyde, I'll check the references in a moment, from Hyde 1917 and McEarlian 1917, that the debt that Irish studies owe to Father Hogan and his magnum opus soon became considerable. <laughs> Lord bless me. Some of the deities, whoever. Lou, bless me. How does that sound? Sorry, folks, I'm going to take an antihistamine. Just so that sneezing doesn't become a a disruption. I know somebody's going to post about what I can take in terms of a herbal remedy. I know, but I can't make a herbal remedy right now, so it's better just to take a tablet. Uh, the sleeping giants are waking up, says Esther Windsor. Yes, uh, well, um, yes, in many respects. Uh, but it's great to pay tribute, isn't it, to those who've gone before, who've done such amazing work. Josie says, I just happened upon these one day in a bookshop in Dublin. I scooped them up. I'd never even heard of them before, but I'll treasure them forever. Maybe on forgetting books. Bless you, Anthony. Yeah, um, I think Josie's talking about uh, Joyce's place names in th in three volumes. I bought mine, oh, maybe 10, 10 to 15 years ago, and I did buy them online. Um, and let's just say they're more much more expensive now. Michael Slaven, in his interview with me, on which is available for patrons, at the Bronze Age level and above on Patreon. The Patreon address is there, by the way. That's it there. Um, he told me that uh, the older uh, first edition stuff is getting rarer and more expensive. 
And part of the reason for that is the internet and international bidders. Uh, a lot of auctions for books used to be in-person auctions held in Dublin or Cork or Tipperary or wherever. Uh, and now there are international bidders. And of course, they have more. Some of them have more money. So they're pushing the prices up. So the original stuff is getting harder to come by. But don't forget, my shelves are full. See that? Just going to try and point out that shelf in particular. See all those orange and brown books there? Those ones. Right. I'm trying to move my hand in the right direction. That shelf there is mostly consisted of facsimile reprints, uh, which are exact copies of the original, but uh, they're, they're printed in outlets in India and other places and are available very cheaply online. And we've just gone up another 20 euros. We are now at 1125 euros. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Wow. Amazing. I thought we thought it was finished. You know, the checks are being presented tomorrow and the checks are all ready for presentation. Anyway, look, it doesn't matter because the rest of the money will go to the charities, too. Now, where was I? Yes, uh, it was clear from Hyde and McEarley. And I just want to check the Hyde reference. Hyde uh, D, I presume that's Douglas Hyde, a great Irish scholar, Reverend Edmund Hogan, SJ, Studies 6, pages 663 to 8. There you go. The Onomasticon succeeded in putting... So the Onomasticon is uh, uh, Latin, obviously, but Onomastics is the study of place names. Uh, and Gaelicum, obviously Irish. Uh, so it's basically Irish place name studies. Onomasticon Gaelicum. Uh, succeeded in putting place name studies in this country on a new footing, especially with regard to the early written sources. Scholars of personal and tribal names owe a similar debt to Michael O'Brien for his Corpus Genealogi Genealogarium Hibernia, and that's O'Brien 1962, just in case you want to look it up. Because the Onomasticon Gaelicum was first published over 90 years ago, it is universally accepted that the time has come to update this standard work of reference. Now, uh, this uh, book that I'm reading from was published in the year 2000, I believe. Yeah. So this is 22 years old. Uh, so this information ha has changed. Uh, this is the remit. Sorry, that it is universally accepted that the time has come to update the standard work of reference. This is the remit of the LOCUS project based in the Department of Early and Medieval Irish University College, Cork, under the direction of Professor Porig O'Rean and with the aid of a very generous grant from Toyota Ireland Limited. This work has been ongoing since October 1996. The project began 10 years earlier as quote, the historical dictionary of Irish place and tribal names, unquote, under the auspices of the Royal Irish Academy and University College Cork, but was transferred exclusively to Cork in 1986. At the moment, we necess I think the electronic version uh, was uh, uh, the electronic onomasticon, uh, Donaka O'Coron, uh, the late Donaka O'Coron, it's not his first name, Donaka, um, somebody help me here, uh, Josie Weatherford. Maybe somebody who who knows uh, Donica O'Coron, if I'm not mistaken, was attached to. Was it NUI Galway or was it? I'm kind of doubting myself now, and I want to be careful what I say because I don't want to uh, credit the wrong person um, uh, or, or leave out somebody. At the moment, the necessary groundwork is nearing completion, and it is hoped that the editing stage will be well in train during 2000. It is envisaged that the end result will be a revised edition of Hogan's Onomasticon in fascicular form, along with a complete database of all collected place names on CD-ROM. Of course, it's now on the internet. Let me see. Let me see. Onomasticon Gaelicum. Yeah, Locus uh, takes you to UCC. Yes. The Locus project has been ongoing since 1996 in the Department of uh, Early and Medieval Irish UCC under the direction. Of, but what was the role of, I thought Donica O'Coron was involved in that. Maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, somebody will be able to tell me whether he was or not. Um, anyway, that's not, as I say, to take any of the um, credit from uh, Professor Orion and assisted by Dr. Jermud O'Murcha, and Dr. Kevin Murray. Um, 
Extensive consultation has taken place with the Place Names Branch of the Ordnance Survey of Ireland, Dublin, and the Northern Ireland Place Names Project, Queen's University. Um, yes, the Centre for the Study of Human Settlement and Historical Change at National University of Galway of Ireland, Galway. So there was an NUIG involvement there. I'm not sure. Um, Oh, yes, I know. I, I I see people talking about not having space for books. I am that person. There there are books on the floor here, folks, I'm afraid to say, because the shelves are now full. Apparently, I'm encouraging people to buy books. Institutions and bodies concerned with place name research. The Ordnance Survey is an important source of information and publications on place names for its work. See, Andrews, yeah, okay, we don't need to read the sources. Building on a tradition that stretches back to O'Donovan, O'Curry, that's Eugene O'Curry, and Petrie, that's George Petrie, among others, the Ordnance Survey has published or facilitated the publication of such important sources as the Ordnance Survey name books, memoirs, and letters. Oh, speaking of which, oh, I'm getting distracted. Oh, uh, can I find it quickly? Can I, can I, can I? Uh, and the quick answer is no, I can't. I thought I would have put it where it absolutely no. Okay. Anyway, I recently I have the uh, Ordnance Survey place name book for Mead, uh, but I recently acquired the Ordnance Survey place name book for Dublin, and I just don't know where I put it. Dory, it's not on the floor. It's there. It's there. It's somewhere safe. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Who cares what book I have? Everybody cares. <laughs> um, donation link again. Okay, give me one second there, Anya. Paste that in so that people on both Facebook and YouTube can see it. There you go. Tara Weston. I'm not... Is that addressed to me? You're a wonderful distraction from real life. And she puts an emoji of a unicorn. <laughs> uh, yes. The reality is, uh, Tara, that I'm distracting myself from real life too, you know. Brendan says, rabbit hole coming up. No, 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 no. We are closing the rabbit hole. We are going to read on, I think. I hope. Maybe. Um. Uh, the Ordnance Survey name books, memoirs and letters. Sorry, it's the Ordnance Survey letters uh, for Meath and Dublin that I have. The series of Ordnance Survey memoirs published by the Institute of Irish Studies in Belfast, 1990 to present, deserve special mention in this regard. On Commission uh, Loganenyache, the Place Names Commission was established by a warrant of appointment issued under the seal of the Minister for Finance in 1946. And just to mention at this point that that uh, has a substantial presence online now with the wonderful uh, website loganium.ie, which is available in English and Irish. And I'm just going to paste that link in there. That is a fabulous resource for place name research in Ireland. Online resource, entirely online, containing all the records that were scanned from the various... Uh, uh, I think they were held at post offices at one time, you know. Aaron Gabral, Aaron Gabral her says woohoo thanksgiving break means i can watch live brilliant stuff you're very welcome and uh, uh pull up a chair and make yourself comfortable uh, so the stated role of the place names commission was one to investigate the place names of ireland seems reasonable uh, seems like an obvious objective two to establish the correct original irish forms of those names more difficult perhaps especially considering uh, the scribes uh, had a habit of not spelling them consistently and three to publish lists of those place names in irish and english for official use the commission had no full-time paid staff at its disposal however its duties were changed to advisory only in 1955 and the research work was left to a permanent body of professionals attached to the ordnance survey this body, the place names branch of the Ordnance Survey, in association with On Commission uh, uh, Lug uh, published a series of booklets entitled Anamnyaka Gelge Na Malche Pusht, relating to the postal district names of each province between 1960 and 1964. Tara White is in the house. Another Tara. We've been talking about Taras and uh, Chower in particular. Uh, Tara, you're very welcome. 
And uh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad that my voice is having the desired effect that it's not putting people to sleep. Uh, these were eventually brought together and published as one volume in 1969. The place names branch followed this with Logamim Nyaka As Poroshte Narina Konde Fort Larga in 1975, the publication of the Gazetteer of Ireland, uh, Gazetteer Naheran in 1989 was another important step towards establishing the correct Irish forms of population centres and physical features. This was followed by the Lushti Loganamnyaka series, which contains the official Irish and English forms of the townlands, civil parishes and baronies of each county. Six volumes, Limerick, Louth and Waterford, all 1991, Kilkenny, 93, Offaly, 94 and Monaghan, 1996 have been issued to date, as well as one volume, uh, that for County Limerick in 1990, listing the historical evidence for the townlands. What is so important about this work is that place name evidence and cartography complement one another. The importance of maps in this area of study should never be underestimated. On Commission Loganonyaka also produced a book, The Place Names of Ireland, in the third millennium, 1992, which focuses on ways in which our rich place name heritage can be preserved for future generations. See O'Coran, 1992. So there's that name that I was talking about, Donica O'Coran, uh, yeah, 1992, A Future for Irish Place Names. Part of the duties of the School of Celtic Studies, Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies, established by a special act of government in 1940, was, quote, the collection and study of Irish place names, unquote. Before work in this area could be organised, however, on Commission Loganonyaka mentioned above, had been formed, and onomastic study remained an ancillary discipline to the school's main research, especially the editing of texts. An exception to this was the important work carried out by Liam Price, resulting in the publication by the school of the place names of County Wicklow in seven volumes, O'Queeve, 1977. Amazing stuff. Mention must also be made of their role. By the way, uh, Tara Weston says women called Tara rule. Well, my one of my daughters is called Tara. and She certainly does rule, I can assure you. <laughs> Uh, wonderful to see the uh, Taras saying hello to each other. Anne O'Hara is saying hello to Stephen O'Hara. Are you related? No relation at all, just coincidence. Mention must also be made of their role as publisher of Father Wal Paul Walsh's The Place Names of Westmead, 1957. In 1964, the, the Journal of Oncommon Lugananyaka, the Place Names Association, uh, Denhianicus, I, I've started to pronounce that with Lenition on the S. I've always pronounced it Dinchanicus, but uh, I think I think with the Lenition it should be Dinchanicus. Uh, so uh, uh, forgive me for my uh, lapse of several years. I'm finally getting around to correcting my uh, my lapses in in my knowledge of Irish. Yes, another twenty. We have raised one hundred and forty-five euros for those local charities uh, in the past half an hour. Thank you. Uh, you wonderfully generous, fantastic, brilliant people. Shine the shining ones. That's what I'm going to call you. You are the shining ones. In 1964, the journal. I said that, but I'll repeat it because I keep forgetting where I am. Because I keep getting distracted. I should just read and stop commenting. In 1964, the journal of On Common sorry, Loganium Loganium Nacha. The Place Names Association, Dinhianicus, began to appear. Over the next decade, edited by Eamon the Heer, uh, chief, or is it the Hoyer, H-O for the I-R, the chief place names officer of the Ordnance Survey, Dinhianicus pursued a vigorous publishing program that resulted in articles on individual place names and place name elements, as well as a series of important contributions from the staff of the Ordnance Survey itself, entitled Oscartlan uh, na Lunum na based on entries in their archival holdings. After the premature death of Eamon de Hoyer, for an appreciation of whom see Flanagan 1978, only one more number of the journal appeared before it ceased publication altogether in 1977. What a tragedy. Unbelievable stuff. Another project deserving of mention here is Kushta Loganonyaka Korki, the Cork Place Names Committee. Under the supervision of Dr. Eamon Lankford, 
To date, this body, with assistance from Cork County Council, FOSS and the Heritage Council, has collected over 30,000 place names, many of them field names, boundary names and other minor names, which are in danger of being lost forever through urbanisation, disuse and the loss of an older generation for whom these were living functional names. Of course, I should mention, in case it doesn't get mentioned later in this uh, chapter, that uh, there are local uh, field name publications, uh, one for Loud, for instance, and one for Mead, which are absolutely fantastic publications involving uh, a large body of volunteer, vol volunteers collecting a huge amount of field names, and uh, the publications themselves are beautiful uh, and substantial, quite comprehensive. This very worthwhile, though labour-intensive work should be duplicated in every county so that our living heritage will not disappear before our eyes. And of course, I've, as I've mentioned, it certainly has happened in Louth and Meath. Guidelines for this type of study have already been laid, da laid down in uh, Nicholson, 1961. Place name research in Northern Ireland. One should not imagine that onomastic publication has been lacking in the north of Ireland. In the last century, the first serial publication devoted to place name research in Ireland was the Bulletin of the Ulster Place Name Society, B-U-P-N-S for short. Though the first series of this journal lasted for only six years, from 1952 to 1957, it managed to publish over 70 pieces comprising articles on place names and place name elements, book reviews, selections from the Ordnance Survey place name, sorry, name books, as well as a cross-section of Ordnance Survey letters, along with sundry articles on dialect, toponymy and cartography. Publication of the journal came to an abrupt end with the sudden death of its editor, co-founder and major driving force, John B. Arthurs, uh, known as Sean, uh, Sean McCart, a lecturer in Celtic studies at Queen's University, Belfast. McCarch is best known among students of Irish history for his editions of the Annals of Inish Fallon, uh, 1944, and the Annals of Ulster, uh, 1983, with Professor Gyaroj uh, McNichol, though these represent only a fraction of his total scholarly output. BUPNS remained defunct until 1978 when it was revived by one of McArch's students, Deirdre Flanagan, Nee Morton, who had contributed much to the original volumes. It may be that the aforementioned demise of the journal Dinshanicus inspired Flanagan to launch, I, I know I'm inconsistent in my pronunciation of that, inspired Flanagan to launch this second series of BUPNS, though it too was fated to have a short innings due to her untimely death in 1984. I shouldn't say it, but I'm seeing a bit of a trend here. If you edit a place names publication, you die early. Wow. Careful. During the period of its publication, 1978 to 82, however, it included important articles on all manner of subjects relating to name studies. The third coming of the Ulster Place Name Society was in 1986, which with the launch, launch of its new journal, Onium, which is the Irish for name, under the edit editorship of Professor Rory O'Higgins. Uh, Seven volumes have been published, with volume eight promised for late 2000. Of course, as I say, this was published uh, 20 years ago, 22 years ago. Michael Trott is saying good morning from New Zealand. The subject of name origins and topography is interesting. It is fascinating, Michael. A very good morning to you. A happy Tuesday morning from us here uh, in, still in Monday. Barbara Murphy says it's a one-all tie. What are we talking about? Is this the World Cup thing in the Oak where they kick a ball of air around the field and try to kick it between sticks? And everybody cheers when they do. Is it that thing? Is it who's playing exactly? Which teams? I know Ireland is not in the World Cup. I can tell you that much. Uh, sorry. Uh, under O'Higgin and present editor, Dr. Nulig O'Morelia, it has actively encouraged place name research in all parts of Ireland, as well as ensuring that an outlet exists for the publication of this work. It is no exaggeration to say that Northern Ireland in general and Queen's University Belfast in particular have led the way in onomastic publication in Ireland. Sorry, onomastic publishing in Ireland. Wales versus US, apparently. Wow. Well, we have friends in both here on the Mythical Learning Community. We are not partisan. We say up the US and up Wales. A one-all draw would be a great result 
because it means we won't have to sympathize with anybody or cheer too loud for the winners. Nowhere is this more evident than in the publications of the Northern Ireland Place Name Project based at the Department of Celtic Studies, Queen's University, Belfast. It was established in 1987 to study the place names of Northern Ireland, appearing on the Ordnance Survey uh, 1 in 50,000 scale map, with a view to elucidating their origins, history and meaning. Under the general editorship of Professor Gerard Stockman, Volumes 1 to 6, and Dr. O. O, o Mora, Morelia, what 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 was the anglicized version of that? M U R A I F A the L E Morelia. It has published seven volumes of detailed research. Uh, Morelia edited volume seven on many of the place names of counties Down, Antrim, and D Derry. The invaluable archive of historical forms of Ulster place names, which has been built up during this work, is stored at Queens. Sue Prenter is joining us. Glad someone else is bothered about the football. I don't even know what football is, barely. I do, really. Uh, I just don't care because Ireland are not in the World Cup. Uh, personal Personnel and publications. Many other place name workers deserve mention, but only a selection of them may be named here. Along with the people enumerated above and in the bibliography, the following have all worked to various degrees on matters uh, onomastic. Historians F.J. Byrne, He's the, the one uh, who uh, 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 compiled or composed the book uh, Irish Kings and High Kings. E. e. McNeil, uh, K. W. Nichols and S. O'Kelly. Linguists G. B. Adams, L. McMahuna, M. A. O'Brien, T. O. Uh, uh, Conconoin, T. S. O'Malley, uh, O'Malley, uh, T. F. O'Rahilly, O. Padell and J. Pocorny. Professional place name scholars uh, a. Machenvard, uh, P. O'Carroll, S. O'Kearney, and P. O'Dolly. Archaeologists, S. O'Reardon, that's Sean P. O'Reardon, who began the excavations of uh, the Mound of the Hostages on the Hill of Tara in the 1950s and didn't complete them because sadly he died. He was mentioned in the quiz. And A. MacDonald. Geographers, B. Mackea uh, and P. O'Flanagan, and perhaps most importantly, local historians and contributors to various local journals. Um, and that's a long list, which I won't read. The work of these scholars, among others, has increased our knowledge of Irish place names and deserves to be read by all who are interested in Irish culture and heritage. The mainstream Irish studies journals, Celtica, Aigse, Eru, Journal of the Royal Society of Antiquities of Ireland, sorry, Antiquaries of Ireland, uh, uh, Parisia, Proceedings of the Royal Irish Academy, Studia Hibernica and their likes have all included important submissions on Irish place names over the years. The contribution of regional journals should not be ignored either because many of them contain a wealth of detail on place names pertaining to their local areas. This is especially true of the information garnered from native Irish speakers at the turn of the 20th century or earlier regarding the folklore, meaning and pronunciation of certain place names in districts where no native speakers now remain. Without the local journals, these records might otherwise have been lost to us. Other important works on Irish place names include Porig o, o Sikfra's uh, uh, Trucha uh, 1939, Canon Patrick Powers, the place names of Daisies, and Brendan O. Uh, Keovine's uh, Toponomia, Toponomia Hiberniae, of which four volumes relating to South Kerry have already been published. Wow. So there's a serious body of work out there, and I have to be honest, I haven't seen some of this, you know. Uh, New Zealand does play soccer, says Michael but not much of Oceania as in the FA World Cup. Well, I think you, uh, New Zealand and, and Ireland have a lot in common in that regard. International dimension. The last important onomastic periodical to be considered here is Nomina, which, was, which is published by the Society for Name Studies in Britain and Ireland. The 19 volumes to date of this journal deal with personal and place name subjects relating to England, Scotland, Wales, the Isle of Man, Guernsey, Ireland and Scandinavia, which represents a very wide range. Pardon me. It is also a very important source of critical reviews of work published on the subject of names. 
The Society for Name Studies holds an annual conference where ideas and opinions are freely exchanged. A recent conference was held in Maynooth in April 1998. And again, apologies, this uh, work is a little bit out of date. Uh, the work of societies such as the Society for Name Studies in Britain and Ireland and the International Committee of Onomastic Sciences, which produces the important journal Onoma, helps to remind us of the international importance accorded to place names. For example, the United Nations has held conferences regularly since 1967 on the standardization of geographical names. In an age of increasing communication, name standardization, which helps to avoid mistakes and yet preserves cultural differences, has become a necessary adjunct to governmental and international planning. The important legal position accorded internationally to place names is also reflected in their position with regard to the law in Ireland. The Towns Improvement Clauses Act 1847, Black 47, the year the Great Famine really took hold, the Public Health Act's Amendment Act 1907, the Local Government Act 1946, the Local Government Regulations 1956, the Road Traffic Brackets Signs Regulations 1962, and the Place Names Brackets Irish Forms Act 1973 have all legally enforceable aspects that deal with place names. For example, under the Road Traffic Signs Regulations 1962, all signposts must contain the Irish language name forms along with their anglicised counterparts. Brilliant stuff. See ya, Desiree. Take it easy. Enjoy the horse ride. And uh, 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 hello also to Amadeus. Yes, indeed. Have a great day. <laughs> Somebody asked for the score. Apparently the score is Dragons 2, Eagles 5, or Brendan, Dad Jokes, nil, Anthony 1. Yes, indeed. Well, I was just going to say that my friend was losing his mind. Uh, he had a jigsaw puzzle that contained 5,000 pieces. And just as he got to the end, he realized he was missing a piece, you know? I mean, I don't know what he's complaining about. He thinks that's bad. I'm missing 4,999 pieces. <laughs> oh, God. Case study. I will continue, and we are near the end. You'll be glad to hear if there are any more jokes like that. The history and descent of a particular place name can often be quite complicated. Yes, indeed. Owing to the many uh, changes that happened not least the changes of uh, you know uh, language and the people who came in and all of that stuff the, uh, sorry yes yes on the face of it a name such as steeples town in the parish of trim in county meath simply denotes a townland with a steeple but when we look at its 19th century irish form balia on clutchia which is basically the, the clock tower or the clock uh, the bell tower, uh, which is Clug Clugheach, was the name, the Irish name for a round tower. We realised that the steeple, the last part of which fell around 1760, was an ancient round tower. The fact that an adjoining townland is named Tullyard enables us to identify the site as Clugheach Telcha Arge, burned by Tiernan Uruk in 1171, just after the Normans came, I believe. After O'Rourke's raid, it was garrisoned by foreigners, presumably the Norman Hugo de Lacy's men, and Goyal Tolka Arge featured feature in the Annals of Chirnoch during the years 1175 to 77. But the Round Tower indicates an important early Christian settlement, and in the Book of Leinster, in a list of Irish saints, are found the names Ciaran Tolka Arge, followed by Ciaran Arge Hyo. H-E-O, father. The suspicion that one of the pair is a doublet of the other is borne out by versions of the same list in other manuscripts where the name reads Ciaran Tolki Arja Hyo. Earlier in the, in the same list, we encounter Brennange Arj O. So it appears that the original name was Ard O, Ard Yo, uh, the height of the U's, which later, as in the U trees, which later became Tolok Arja Hyo uh, and Tolok Ard literally meaning the high hillock 
part of which later became Bolya on Klughia, uh, 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 Steeplestown, while the other part remain, remained Tullochard, Tullyard. Fascinating stuff. Conclusion. Uh, uh, Tara Weston, uh, the, the uh, apparently the Winter Solstice lottery uh, has been, draw has been made, and the winners have been selected. I wasn't even entered because I didn't even know it was uh, back on. I, I don't think you fill out forms anymore. I think it's all done online. How do I get into the chamber at Newgrange this year? Well, at the moment of solstice, you don't. But if you turn up on the day of the solstice, they will let you in after uh, the uh, solstice guests have emerged, which I always find to be really special, getting into the chamber uh, as the sun is kind of still streaming up the passage. Conclusion. Okay, forgive me for laughing, but I need to be in the chamber of Newgrounds. Uh, so do I. <laughs> I. I want and need to be there. Um, yeah, good luck with that one is all I can say, Tara. Uh, there's a there's an official list, and if you're not on it, uh, you won't get in. But who knows, you know? Maybe you could pretend you're one. No, I wouldn't even encourage that. Ed, please don't do that. Don't do that. That just would not be a good idea. Please. We do not encourage that kind of thing here on Mythical Ireland. Definitely not. The study of place names contributes to our understanding of many different areas of human endeavour. Cultural, historical, linguistic, legal, cartographic, geographic, to name just a few. It is an area of scholarship that combines the need for flair and precision to do full justice to the naming practices of bygone generations. Personal names and place names are very much part of what we are, a genuine, recognisable cultural link with our past. A recent publication already referred to deals with names of places in Ireland in the third millennium, and it is worth remembering that many of these places still bear versions of names that were assigned to them around the beginning of the first millennium. Fascinating stuff. And there is a bibliography there which runs to... Well, the best part of two pages, actually, which is extraordinary. So there's a huge amount of work there. Anyway, uh, folks, I hope you've enjoyed yourselves this evening. I certainly have. Let, let us just take another check on the uh, GoFundMe campaign. And uh, again, thanks to Anya and uh, uh, is it Anna Liffey for prompting us to share the link um, because it's not necessarily closed. Yeah, we are at uh, 1145 euros. So we've raised 145 euros during this episode, you know. Um, that's quite extraordinary. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for your generosity. Uh, it's been extraordinarily kind of you in the first place uh, towards uh, my myself and my own predicament. But, um, you know, I, I'm, as I said, there are people in much, much more... Uh, greater need than I and in much uh, uh, more dire need than I and let's do our best uh, to help those so keep an eye out on the social media tomorrow Facebook in particular Instagram uh, Twitter for uh, the official uh, presentation photographs as I say myself and on Goba uh, Mr King uh, Mr Tom King whose idea it was to set up a GoFundMe in the first place um, you know uh thank you to him for uh his uh his very very wonderfully kind gesture which of course none of us are surprised uh because that's the kind of bloke he is uh he is a, a, a thoroughly uh brilliant human being uh who Godarn i did not see earlier uh, so i'm not sure if i said hello to you i don't think i did uh, this evening uh, you're very welcome uh, at the, well, i'm saying you're very welcome just as i'm about to uh, finish the episode uh so uh, please don't forget the gofundme is there uh, oh do you know what just one last time i will paste it again just in case and uh, if you can spare a fiver or more 50 100 whatever if you can spare it give it if you can uh, as I say, it's all going to uh, uh, to very, very good local charities based here in, in the Boyne Valley area and uh, to uh, people and animals uh, that are in, uh, in, as I say, great need. 
Uh, what else is on the calendar? There may or may not be a Mythical Ireland public tour in December. Um, uh, December, <laughs> you know, the weather uh, is the big factor there. Uh, I haven't announced one anyway yet. Keep an eye on, again, the website and the, the uh, uh, social media channels. Does anyone else enjoy the uh, facial expressions of our leader as he reads the posts? <laughs> yeah, I hope I do. Sometimes, you know, I you probably have seen in the past, sometimes I see a dodgy one and I, and I oh, I can read in that. <laughs> uh, good night, everyone, and have a fantastic... Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that because they're, they're all... I meant to do that. Good night, everyone, and have a fantastic week. Same to yourself, Brendan, in uh, Glandall. Look, oh, geez, I'm all blushing, says Tom King. Thank you so much, Anthony. Our Tua United. Yes, we could even win the World Cup if we got together. Yeah, I love that symbol. That, you know, that punchy fisty symbol. What a punchy fisty. Ah, geez, for a writer and a journalist, sometimes my turn of phrase is a little bit, uh, shall we say, less than professional. Um, Hang on, just scrolling to find you one more humorous, uh, one more piece of humor before I go. I've been in bed for 20 minutes and I just remembered I only came upstairs for a pen. <laughs> uh, admit it, a whole load of you are going, yeah, I've been that soldier. Ah, that's exactly what happened to me, you know. Uh, in fact, it turns out that I haven't got my usual... Uh, my daughter was doing her history homework and asked me what I knew about Galileo. I said, he was a poor boy from a poor family. <laughs> Good night, Gillian Stapleton. Thank you for joining us. Good night, Esther Windsor. Good night, Daisy and Elaine. Happy Thanksgiving to all who celebrate that day. Uh, yes, indeed, Elaine, uh, to all the uh, our friends on the other side of the Atlantic. Thanks for reading and dad joke. Good to be with the mighty Tua again. Take care. Good to see you, Joe. Thank you very much. And uh, go go easy, as they say. Dee McKiernan says, sounds like I've missed interesting stuff. Monday evening is one of my volunteering sessions. Look forward to listening back. You'll enjoy it, I think, Dee. But uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, good to get to say hello anyway. And it'll be available as a video as soon as we finish. I think it's pretty much instantaneous, isn't it? I think. So as soon as we finish. And speaking of finishing, is there an outro? Did I use one last week? Did I? Um, yes, indeed. Uh, let's pick one. That's nice. Uh, folks, thank you and good night. And uh, don't forget uh, uh, to order your Mythical Ireland 2023 calendar on the Mythical Ireland website. That's mythicalireland.com. I think mythicalireland.ie. Let me just double check that because uh, it wasn't working for a while. But with the new website, the .ie address should bring you to mythicalireland.com. Yes, it does. Mythicalireland.com or mythicalireland.ie uh, to order your 2023 calendar. Still have plenty here. So don't worry. They're not running out just yet. But do get them. and let, Let's get them into the post uh, before the busy Christmas rush. Slán gafol, take it easy. Ikhwa kolosav, or for those of you in Oceania who, for whom it is now Tuesday, don't fall asleep uh, unless you work night shifts or you don't work during the day and you fancy a nap. Ikhwa kolosav, August slán gafol, and the main thing, of course, is the one that I always say, which is tog gabugé. Take it easy.